What is the role of uh, bronchodilators uh, in the management of uh, COPD? The role of uh, bronchodilators in COPD is now much better established and it actually is felt to be a central component of the therapy of patients for COPD. And it's probably true that all patients with COPD should be on some type of bronchodilator. The guideline gold was uh, updated. What are the news? So we've updated uh, the gold guideline uh, really two substantial ways in the last few years. The first was to understand that assessing the symptoms and the risk of exacerbations in a patient were key components for a clinician making therapeutic decisions. And so that was a big change. It's what all of us have done and practiced for a long time. Gold just happened to put it within the document. This most recent re uh, revision, we actually also listened to clinicians, reviewed the available data, and made a strategic decision that I think has been well received by clinicians. And that is, spirometry in the FV1 remains the gold standard for diagnosis and stratifying severity of airflow obstruction. But it doesn't provide very explicit guidance on a patient level regarding what the therapeutic approach should be. So we separated the FV1 as a diagnostic prognostic marker and continued to emphasize to the clinician that the therapeutic decisions, particularly pharmacotherapeutic decisions, are based on symptoms and risk of exacerbations. And what is the role of general practitioners in the diagnosis of COPD and in the use of spirometry? So the general practitioner is the key individual uh, in the management of pretty much all patients with COPD. They do the bulk of the care of COPD, and as a result, they do the bulk of the diagnostic components of COPD. And so I think all of us globally, certainly in the U.S., uh, have made a very aggressive approach to discussing, involving the primary care clinicians in the entire spectrum of COPD diagnosis, management, and eventually referral if needed. It's, it's clear that globally spirometry remains underused. There are only certain pockets around the world where you see better spirometry utilization. The U.S. is not one of those places. And so we are trying to develop simple formats that we can provide clinicians in the primary care setting. That in just a few questions, just very simple measurements, can provide to the clinician a pointer that says, this person could have COPD, you should really consider diagnostic testing. The diagnostic test that is the test to make the diagnosis is spirometry. So obviously part of what we're trying to provide our primary care partners is, think about COPD in the appropriate setting and consider the use of spirometry in that population because you're much more likely to have a positive result and one where you're likely going to make a change in the therapy for that individual patient.